number 47. After the killing of James, the son of Zebedee, Herod also arrested Peter because... Why did Herod arrest Peter? Because he discovered that when he killed James, the son of Zebedee, the Jews are happy about it. They were excited about it. So he deemed it fit to take Peter and put him in the custody, waiting for the period of Passover so that he can bring him out and kill him. But the uh, disciples arose for him and prayed for him. So therefore, the reason why he took Peter was to please the Jews. So the answer is B, because the Jews were pleased with the mother of James. Question 48. Who was the first martyr? This question can come in various ways. They can ask you, who was the first Christian martyr? The reason why they say it like that is because these people died as a result of their faith, as a result of their belief in Jesus Christ, why they were preaching about the good news of Jesus Christ. This, the first Christian Mattia is Stephen. It was, it was Stephen. This Stephen was stoned to death when he was actually preaching to the people, the, the scribes, the Pharisees, the leaders, the church leaders. When he was preaching to them about Jesus Christ, he narrated it from the beginning, how God called Abraham. And, they were, and when he mentioned the statement that Jesus Christ is now seated at the right hand of God, when they had this, that statement, they stoned him. To death because to them he was uttering what is referred to as blasphemy. Question 49 Who was the second martyr of the early church? This question also can come as Who was the first apostle martyr? So if you see it, it was the first apostle martyr. It is not Stephen. It is not Stephen because Stephen was not among the apostles. Stephen was not among the apostles, he was among the seven deacons that were selected to solve the problem of discrimination of food. But this James was among the disciples, he was among the apostles. So if they ask the question this way, that who was the first apostle Matthias? It is James. All the disciples, all those apostles, they died for their faith. The second Matthias is James the brother of John. I've told you it can come as this, that who was the first apostle to be martyred. So you should have known that it is James, the son of Zebedee. He was killed by Herod Agrippa. Question 50. Who baptized the Ethiopian Enoch? Like we have said earlier, when we saw a particular question that was related to this, we said Philip, God led Philip to go to Jerus to a, a, a road linking Jerusalem to Gaza. That was where he met this Ethiopian Enoch that was reading the book of Isaiah in his end. He doesn't understand. And when he explained to him, the, when they were moving, they saw water. And the Ethiopian Enoch requested that what is injuring him from being baptized. And Philip baptized the Ethiopian Enoch. So looking at this answer, C is the answer because Philip was the one who baptized the Ethiopian Enoch and after that he disappeared. But it was later, it was cut off by the Spirit of God and it was later found at Azotus preaching the word of God. So the answer is option C. Question 51. While Peter was still speaking this, the Holy Spirit fell on all who had the word. Where did this happen? This happened after Peter had stood up and rose against the allegation in which people are telling them on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples had received the Holy Spirit, they said they were drunk. He actually stood up to erase that kind of thoughts from them. As I have said earlier, these people gathered together in an upper room in Jerusalem. So this, you see, this, this actually happened in Jerusalem, which made the option to be A, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So that is where the Holy Spirit fell upon the disciples. Question 52. According to Paul in Philippians, humility means giving consideration to other people's, it is expedient for you to know those things that this we, we are now moving to, we are, if this question is related to the epistles Paul wrote to the Philippians. You must know exactly what Paul said to the Philippians. If you don't know it, you can take another option. 
Now, there's, there are two options here that are very, very, that are very, very related. If you don't know it well, you can go and pick the wrong option. Now, according to Paul in Philippians, humility means giving consideration to other people's interests. He said that they should count, they, they should not count it by, as a bad thing for them to count the interests of others before theirs. That is, a, that is talking about humility in the letter of um, you, uh, for to the Philippians about humility. He told them about the, necess the necessity of humility because Jesus Christ was humble to, to the cross. Because he told them in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 to 9, he told them that Jesus Christ was in the form of God, but he did not count himself as equal to God. He came down in the likeness of men. He was born in the form of men and he was obedient even to the death of the cross. So therefore, he said that they should, they should give consideration to other people's interests and not need, according to Paul in his letter to the Philippians. The answer is C. Option C. Question 53. Peter teaches that for being humble, a Christian obtains. Now, look at this again. Paul wrote to the Philippians about humility. Peter too also wrote another part of his epistle on humility. So, therefore, you must be able to know what they all said about humility. Now, Peter was addressing the Jews that they should be humble. And he was telling the leaders to turn their flocks that God has put in their custody to turn them very well. And they should be sober and they should be vigilant because the devil roused like a lion seeking whom he may devour. So those are what Philip and Peter said in his epistles on humility. So therefore, Peter teaches that for, a, for being humble, a Christian obtained he told the youth that pride goes before a fall. And he said that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So therefore, Christians obtain grace for being humble, which makes the answer to be option D. Question 54. Question 54 says, Paul admonished Philemon to accept Onesimus back as a... Now, if we should look at... Philemon, Onesimus, and Paul. Paul was actually pleading on behalf of Onesimus, which was one of the slaves of Philemon, who ran away with some of the properties of uh, Philemon. And in one way or the other, Onesimus got in contact with Paul while in the prison. And therefore, Philemon also was a brother to Paul because Paul was the one who converted Philemon. And he now deemed it fit to reconcile the party together, to reconcile Onesimus to his master. And he wrote a letter, which is Philemon. Philemon chapter 1. He wrote it to Philemon, telling him, begging him on behalf of Onesimus. And he told him that he should accept him, not as, no longer as a slave, but as a brother. So the answer is option C as a brother so he said he should take him as a brother and whatever he has stolen from him he should count it on him he should count it on him that he should forgive that forgiveness is not by compulsion but by free will he said it with affirmation that Philemon will not he, he, will, he said it with what affirmation that he knows that he will do even more than he has requested on behalf of Onesimus, because he knows that they are the same brothers and he was the one that converted Philemon. So the answer is C as a brother. Question 55. Paul told the Corinthians that if anyone has caused pain to the church, he should be. No, Paul was writing to the people of Corinthians, still on humility. He was writing to the people of Corinthians that when an offender is being punished in the church, then what they have to do is to accept that brother so that that brother will not feel, will, will, will not feel, uh, will not feel guilty, so that the brother will not feel ashamed 
He said, after they have punished the brother or, or beat any member, then the next thing is that they should forgive the person and they should accept the person into the fold of Christ. Because once they have punished an offender, they have actually honored him. They have honored him, Paul, because the offender, Paul was writing to here in the Corinthians, offended Paul. And the people of Corinthians were treating the person in a way they shouldn't. And Paul was writing to them that when an offender has been punished in the church, the next thing is for them to accept the person. So therefore, looking at the option here, we will see, discover that the option, the, the correct answer is option C. Such offender should be forgiven and comforted. Should be forgiven and comforted so that they will not give room for the devil to so uh, they will not give room for the devil to penetrate into the church. So the option, the right option is option C, to be forgiving and comforted. Question 56. The person used by James to illustrate his teaching on prayer was, James also wrote on effective prayer. In his highlights on effective prayer, he said that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And he cited the example of Elijah, who prayed that it should not rain for three and a half years, and his prayers was honored by God. So he was actually telling us that there is power in the, in the prayer of a righteous man. So he cited example of Elijah in his highlights on effective prayers. And he also said that when we pray, we should not doubt. Because a, doubt, a doubted man is a double-minded man and is unstable in his ways. So he emphasized that we should pray without doubt. And therefore, the man he cited is Elijah, which makes the option to be D. The option to be D. Question 57. James advised that Christians should sing praises when they are. If you don't know the, the teachings of James in his letter, you will pick the wrong option. And that is why you must be, you, you must be very, very sure of what he has said in his letter on effective prayer. Now, here in his highlights on effective prayer, he said that we should sing praises. Not when we are wealthy, not when we are lonely, not when we are suffering. He said we should sing praises, sing psalms, when we are happy. When we are happy. And when we are passing through suffering, which can be our test of faith to produce steadfastness, he said we should pray. And also, he said when we are happy, we should sing psalms. And he said when we are sick, we should go to the elders to pray and anoint. That anointing means cleansing. When he said the prayer, after he has said that, he said the prayer of a righteous man availeth most. So that was what he said. So when we are happy, he said we should sing praises. So the option is option B. The correct option is B. Question 58. James in his epistle urged brethren to count their trials all joy because the testing of their faith produces steadfastness. Steadfastness, not joy, not wisdom. What he said on wisdom was that if we lack wisdom, he said we should ask God who gives to men liberally without doubt, without any form of doubt, because a doubted man is unstable in his ways. So he said that when we are passing through suffering, we should count it all joys because it is to produce steadfastness in us. So the answer is C. Of the, the question answer to question 58 is option C. Question 59. According to James, the prayer that has great power in its effect is that of a righteous man. As I have said earlier, is that of a righteous man. He said the prayer of a righteous man availed much. So the prayer that has great effect is the prayer of a righteous man, according to James. So the option, the correct answer is option C. Question 60. 